begins. <laughs> it begins.
inside? Or no. is it just... It's not on the, it's not on the water line. Okay, so, but it may... The line of the white meeting the orange on the inside. So there's I'm gonna use it as an eyeliner. Wow, you're such a good. Not achieve because it's being plagiarized. <laughs> no.
always begin by planning on Photoshop. This is my draft sketch that I've made, and then this is the render that I've done. The good thing about Photoshop is that you can adjust your proportions always, and you can work on colors, which is really good for the planning process, and it is so essential. This helps you spend more time painting and less time thinking during the actual process, which I think is always a bonus. Okay, so second day, I've made some revisions in my draft, and I can start drawing and painting. It's always important to plan before you paint. It will save you so much time, take it from me. Okay, so I begin by inserting a sheet of cardboard inside the garment so that it is flat I paint on top of it. Okay, so this is the part of the process that everyone's most interested in. I start laying down the base colors for my painting. Always make sure that you have at least your shadows, your highlights, and your midtones. That's the very bare essentials that you need for paintings. Make your blacks blacks and your whites as whites as you can. And as you can see here, I just start improvising from this point. Okay, so I'm going to show you a technique called one brush stroke painting. You're going to dip one end of the brush into one color and the other end into another color. Then what you're going to do next is you're going to mix on the palette the two colors together in one direction. And because of this, you're able to create a really cool effect where the colors blend into each other. I use this to make bamboo shoots and uh, flowers and leaves. And it's something I think you should practice as well. It's really cool for paintings and it's a really easy blending technique to use. Okay, so you guys might be wondering what I used to paint. So I use acrylic paint when I paint. I don't use fabric paint as it's really expensive. What is the difference between both of them? Well, one is softer than the end. Um, if you do want to use fabric paint, you can buy fabric medium. Fabric medium is mixed in with your paint in a one-to-one -one ratio. And what it does is it allows the painting to be softer on the softer surface eventually. There's not that much difference in my experience. I use both of them and I prefer acrylic paint on its own. It's easier to do, it's faster to do, and it lasts just as long. So use acrylic paint, you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm basically done with this piece. I might add more stuff tomorrow. So the next part of the process is to heat set your paint. And this makes sure it stays on the garment. So what you do is you let this set for 24 hours, take a hot iron, and then press it onto the surface directly, and let it cure for another 48 hours. Acrylic paint takes 48 hours to cure, so make sure you need time for that. And then you should be good. Don't wash this too much, you should be fine. Enjoy your painting. <laughs> I make more of these, so if you like it, Instagram down below. Okay, so before you start any painting, probably the number one most helpful tip I can give you is to plan your painting. You gotta come up with a concept and what you wanna paint, and then you can improvise from there. Because usually what happens is when you just paint straight from the get-go, you kind of waste a lot of time improvising and rethinking things, and then you repaint, and you waste a lot of paint. Not that it's bad, it adds to the creative process. However, usually if you're doing it for someone else, like your project, they've got the time limit. You gotta respect that, so pre-planning saves time. That's what I'm doing right now. I like to draft up concepts and collage together sketches in Photoshop. It's really easy to do. I'll draw in real life and put it up in Photoshop and then edit it from there so I can judge color, composition, size, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, pre-plan. Don't try to be a hero, just pre-plan. If you're beginning painting, make your life easier. Pre-plan. Okay, so for this project, uh, Mimi, my client, or my client she wanted a kind of golden sunset vibe painting with flowers and butterflies and her and her boyfriend so in this composition that I made um, I worked with this really cool sunset beach scene I'm gonna superimpose flowers on top and then some uh, flying moths in the painting to create leading lines into the center of the image see this is a leading line and all of the moths face towards the middle. So um, usually when it comes to color in paintings, a lot of people struggle with this. Um, I recommend sticking to a limited color palette. So for this painting, I've got three main colors, which is green, yellow, and this pinky orange color. Um, what having a limited color palette does is that it forces you to think out of the box. It makes you um, try to think of your colors in your paintings objectively and see what you really need what you don't need 
it also makes uh, mixing colors a lot better because you have less colors to mix and yeah so I'd say if you're coming up with a new painting just try to choose like three colors and then just improvise from that point on and you'll be fine yeah so this is the painting that we'll be doing for Nini today I'll probably be improvising on top of this anyway but this is a good rough vision of what we're trying to aim for for today on the jacket oh so I really love this weather today it's so nice look at that it's like summery but cold thank you New Zealand <laughs> okay but yeah I'm gonna start painting now please Jesus help me today <laughs> is like 80% done. I've got to do her silhouette but basically colors are laid down now to finish it and then to heat set. Very important. Whew. Okay so I started about at like two. Now it's seven. That is my brother. Now it's 7.30, so I've painted for about five hours. It's not bad, it's pretty fast. And it looks like that. Yo, that is so sick. Added the little border, so there's a frame. And then the, um, the flower and the flap. As you can see, we added gold spray paint. It's really reflective. Which I think is cool because I like playing with surface quality and that shiny thing is just I never love shiny stuff.
beautiful silhouette done. check it is 8.13 8 hours not bad really happy with this one I hope she likes it I'm gonna send her a photo and let's see what she says okay so this painting is basically done it is finished and now is the most important part of the process which is setting your painting so this allows the painting to stay on as long as possible on the garment but before you heat set with an iron, which is how you do it, you have to let your acrylic paint dry for 24 hours because that's how long it takes for the paint to cure. I've already done that. And now you're going to heat set. So grab a shirt that you don't really care about and lay it over your painting. And then grab your iron on the hottest setting. I put it to the hottest setting over here. And then you're going to um, press on the fabric on the hottest setting and you're going to go over it so that it heats up the surface below. You're going to do this for as long as you can. So this is the first stage of heat setting. And then the reason why I do this is so that um, if there's anything that's not dry, it sticks to the fabric and not to this. Okay, that seems good. Okay, so now you're gonna press this directly onto the painting. You're just gonna do it in steps, so area by area. It kind of melts the um, the painting into the surface. As you can see, none of it's cotton on yet so far. And you're just gonna press it on, let it heat set. It might not do so. I use spray paint, it's kind of sticking to the iron, but it's alright, it's not the end of the world. And just heat set your painting. So you do this for a few rounds until you feel like it's um, kind of softened. And then after heat setting of the iron, you're going to leave it to set again for another 48 hours before you can wash it. Um, ideally, I wouldn't wash it like until after a week, but you can wash it. Just make sure you let it set for another 48 hours after heat setting it. And then you should be fine. And yeah, there you go. That is your painted jacket done. I really hope Nini likes it. <laughs> this is her and her boyfriend silhouetted against this really cool um, nature scene. Yeah. Okay. So if you like to see more paintings, because I'm going to be do doing quite a lot of them over this holiday, subscribe. <laughs> Please. Thank you. And yeah, enjoy. And uh, good luck painting. Oh, um, I got this question in my last video how to paint on fabric. Someone asked if they could use spray paint to paint on their clothes. Yes, you can. Uh, generally, in terms of mediums, you can use on clothes. Uh, as long as it's not water-based, you can use it on your clothes to paint. Because if you think about it, you are putting these clothes in the laundry. If you use anything water-based, like watercolor, which seems pretty obvious, but some people do do it. If you use watercolor paint on clothes, it will come off in the laundry, and all your clothes will be stained. spray paint and whatever 
else you can think of that is not water-based will be found on your clothes and it will stay on the clothes so yeah but if you've got any more questions just ask me down below in the comment section and i'll answer it